Hello, sweet peeps. How are you doing today? Hello, daddy. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, thanks for having me again. And it's good to see all of you out there and some new fresh faces I see. So, yeah, the weather's been nice. Uh, and I'm excited to learn some new phrases. How are you doing, Saw? Oh, I'm doing great and uh, happy to be one more day with you. Uh, yes, and uh, let's go on, yes? Yes. Yes, I had a really good day with my family and uh, look at something to share with our followers today. And uh, let's get started, Jen. Yeah. yeah. Let's have some fun. Okay, so uh, today it's another day of advanced English vocabulary. Master class for you guys. And in the end, you're going to have uh, all the vocabularies to express your ideas fluently and confidently. And welcome back to Junto com o Nativo. So let's get started. You're going to start this masterclass with what? With phrasal verbs. Because as I always say, native speakers love using phrasal verbs. I told it in the other classes, and it's good to say again, yes, because maybe not everybody watched the previous classes. So this first one, that it could you read? No, oh, yes. So to act on, so to take action on information, advice, or recommendations. So like, um, we are going to buy a car or we're thinking about buying a car, but should we act on it or should we just keep thinking about it? Um, act on, yeah, let's, let's go to the beach. Let's act on that. Yes, let's do it. All right. So, um, yeah, to take action or advice. You go ahead, Saul. Great. Good addition, yes. And this first one, the number one, to act on it, uh, simply means to take action. So, to act, but you act on a specific information advice or recommendations that you received, that you have received. For example, the manager acted on the findings of the report. So, of course, in this report, there's a lot of information in the device. And if you act on that information, the manager acted on the findings of the report. In a meeting, you might uh, suggest just uh, to your coworkers, we need to act on the recommendations. We need to take action outside of the workplace, you might say, we need to act on the advice from our financial analyst. So they gave you some advice, you need to act on it. Yes, Daddy, could you read it, that one? That was good. Good job. Um, 
Yeah, to bargain for, to expect something negative to happen. Well, I would say maybe not expecting something negative to bargain for as in like, um, if you're going to buy a car, you want to bargain with them. So you go in there and you negotiate a price. So you're going to bargain for it. You're going to come up with an agreement on something. Um, as in, if I was going to go purchase a house, let's go bargain shopping, you know, go bargain, go find houses in your price range and you find a bargain, someone to bargain with. Uh -huh. You bargain. Um, like back in the day, they used to use fur uh, for trading and it would be bargaining. All right, I got two furs. What do you got? There's a bargain. That's a good bargain. That's a good bargain. Yeah, when you have a good bargain, that means you came out on top, at least in your eyes. They might have came out on top on their eyes, but you came out with a good bargain. Okay, so? Yes, that's amazing. Yes, good example. So this number two to bargain for, this is when you expect something to happen, but that something is usually negative. So you expect something negative to happen. Now notice the sentence structure here, because we most commonly use this phrasal verb in the negative form. We haven't bargained for such a high interest rate. So it's saying we didn't expect. Or you could say we hadn't bargained for so many people at the conference. So this is a great expression that you can use, but I recommend using it in the negative. And the next, Daddy. In the negative, um, not really negative, because you could come out on top on that. Uh, it was not always negative. Um, no. Yeah, no. Uh, so, okay, the next one is to opt in. The opposite of opting out of something. Uh, so to become a member, to join, I'm opting in. So um, homeowners association, and you opt in to becoming a member of that association. You don't have to, but you can. So you chose, it's like choosing to do something on your own something you're not mandatory to do. Um, I opt into going into the military. Um, I opt into getting married. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so yeah, those are, those are basically like, just like choosing to do something that most people don't always do. So go ahead, Saul. Yes, great. Uh -huh. Exactly that, yes. This third one. Yeah. Number three, opt in. When you opt in something, it means you become a member of something. So if you're a new employee at the company, they might have certain things that are membership based such as the pension plan, the health care plan, or other insurance plans. 
maybe even some uh, committees and uh, if you want to, to be a member you need to opt in for example as a new employee you need to opt into the insurance plan now the opposite of in is out so if you don't want to be a member you can opt out so for example Uh, uh, the example is not here. <laughs> what happened? If you don't want to be a member, you need to opt out. Yes, that's the example. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next, yes, you can read. To play down, and this is one I'm I'm not real familiar with. Um, I don't. I haven't used it much. Uh, to make something seem less important, serious than it is in reality. To play down to. To make it, not as bad. Um, so. Like the media sometimes will make it worse than it is, so they play it off way more than it is or so we uh, play playing it off yeah I guess I use it playing it off so okay yes you you're not so familiar with that when that was played down but I said play it off so used to maybe yeah so go ahead so let me let me see am I I'm gonna learn something here yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yes, so that is the number four is to play down. Uh, this is a great phrase of verb. It means to make something seem less important or less serious than it's, it really is. For example, the government try to play down the scandal. So they had the scandal and they want to make it seem less important or less serious. They tried to play it down. Or I could say, example, the documentary played down his divorce. So there's this documentary on this person who got divorced and they're trying to make it seem less serious or less important than it really was in reality and that's what you need to keep in mind in reality the situation was more serious, but the documentary played it down. Uh, it wasn't that uh, big of a deal. Yes. And to the next, Daddy. Yes. Good job. Way to explain that one. That was that was a tough one. And I did get to learn something. So okay. to drop out. To quit a course, a school, a program, to just drop out of something. Sometimes it's an option, sometimes it's not. I did drop out of high school when I was my beginning year of my senior year. So I dropped out. Um, you can drop out of a race. If you're going into a race and you're like, nah, I'm just gonna drop out, yeah not going to do this you can drop out of the sky <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> i just had to throw that in there. 
fantasy uh, world we can everything <laughs> we can do yeah, you can drop out of the sky where'd that apple come from it dropped out of the sky yeah oh. <laughs> right on my head <laughs> uh yeah you could drop like out station. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, drop out of an airplane. So yeah, go ahead, stop. Take cover. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. So good. Uh, that is the number five to drop to drop out. So when you drop out, uh, this is specifically used when you quit a course. Or you quit an entire program, high school program. So if you're pursuing a degree uh, and you quit them, you drop out. Now, interestingly, Bill Gates dropped out uh, of a, a college to start Microsoft, and we know how successful that was. So also, it might seem negative that you drop out, you quit, maybe not always the case. Mark Zuckerberg, uh, the founder of Facebook, also dropped out of school of college to start Facebook. I'm not encouraging you to drop out, but it's not always negative. And you can also use this for a specific course. For example, I think I'm going to drop out of calculus. It's too difficult. I'm going to quit calculus. Yes? Into the next, Daddy. Yes. So, to cut back, to spend less, do less, use less mm -hmm. of something. Um, yeah, I drink a lot of coffee. I mean, you probably should cut back. It's turning my teeth yellow. No. Um, <laughs> I need to cut back on my sugar. I'm going to get diabetes. No, uh huh? Good. Yeah. Need to cut back. Darling, you need to cut back on spending money. You spend way too much money. Let's cut back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, cut back. yeah, cut back on eating so much, period. Eating too much. I eat too much. I need to cut back. So, yeah, go ahead, Saw. You got this. Yes. Yeah, that is the number six to cut back. Good, Dad. Your examples. This is when you spend less, you do less, or you use less of something. This is very commonly used by government or companies also. Example, the government has announced plans uh, to cut back, to cut back <laughs> on the fence is spending by 10%. Now notice I said on. If you specify this something defense is spending, you need to use the preposition on. Cut back on. Cut back on defense is spending. I could also just say, example, the government announced the plans to cut back. Yes. 
in that sense, you it is just reduce spending, spending less, and then you you have to clarify. Well, cut back on what? Now we frequently use this as advice to someone. Let's say you told me, uh, Sabrina, I drink 10 sodas a day. I would say, whoa, you should cut back. You should uh, consume less. That is too much soda. You should cut back. Yes. Number seven, Daddy. Mm -hmm. All right. That was fun. To sit in on. <laughs> to sit in on. To sit on it. To attend a meeting as an observer. Or to sit in um, for someone else. I'm sitting in for Sabrina for Saw because she can't make it. I'm sitting in, uh, I'm, take, I'm taking their spot, basically, you could say, too. I'm sitting in on your lap. No, just kidding. <laughs> I come to sit on your lap. <laughs> I will die. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Uh, to sit in on, yeah, to sit on, observe. Um, I want to come and sit in on sit in on and observe your class because it seems very interesting and I need some pointers. Um, I come to sit in on watching you cook because I'd like to learn how and pick your brain. So yes, to sit in on your face. So go ahead, saw. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So that is the number seven to sit in on. Uh, this is a great business phrase of verb. It's used specifically in the context of a meeting. And when you sit in on a meeting, it means you attend a meeting, but you uh attend that meeting uh, that's an observer. So you're not going to participate. You're not going to present. You're not going to ask questions. You're just going to attend as an observer. So if there uh, a really interesting meeting at work, but you not directly related to the subject matter, you might ask the organizer, uh, the example, is it okay if I sit in on the meeting today? And which means you're just going to attend, to listen, to receive the information. You're not going to participate, participate. Or if you're planning a sales meeting, you might say, example, it would be useful to have someone from accounting sitting on the meeting. So someone from accounting is just going to be there to, to absorb the information, but you don't. Ex uh, you don't expect them to participate or present anything. So very useful phrase of verb in a business context. Number eight, Daddy. That was fun. I like that one. 
to whip up. Oh, to whip up, to get whipped, to prepare food quickly or drinks, I would say too. To... So, darling, I'm hungry. Would you please whip up some pancakes, please, real quick? Um, or can we whip up some margaritas? Oh, I'm hungry. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> pancakes. I love pancakes. Pancakes are so good. Yes. Uh, could we whip Martin. up some uh, margaritas? Could we whip up some tacos? That sounds good. I want some tacos. Yeah. Let's yeah, let's let's whip up some cake. I want a cake for my birthday. Yeah. To whip up. You like the whip. Yeah. So go ahead, Saw. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's it. Uh, interesting one. This number eight, good daddy, good examples. This is a funny one. No? Mm -hmm. To whip up. To whip up. This is very specific because it's used with food and is used when you make food quickly so you make yourself a breakfast lunch dinner a snack it doesn't matter you make any type of food but you do it really quickly so you might say oh no i'm getting late i running late I need to whip up my breakfast I need to make my breakfast really quickly or let's say you have some guests come over uh, unexpectedly and you want to serve them something you might say to your husband, example, give me a few minutes to whip up some appetizers. Yes. So I'm going to mm -hmm. make some appetizers really quickly. So this is a great phrasal verb that you can add to your daily vocabulary. And now, number nine, daddy. Those those appetizers were looking kind of tasty, weren't they? Little teeny ones, but they're looking good. So, to yeah. dress up. So you could use this for dressing up yourself to wear more professional or formal clothing for a specific occasion, or you can dress up a vehicle to help sell it. You can dress up your dish that you are making to make it look better and more presentable. Um, I like to say, let's dress that pig up or let's dress up a pig, like put lipstick on a pig. So basically <laughs> you're just covering up something that's ugly and making it prettier mm -hmm. to help sell it or to- Good. Yeah, to make it look more presentable. Yeah. So you're just dressing it up. Oh, that thing's ugly. You just dressed it up. Or that thing's a piece of junk. You just dressed it up. I could tell. <laughs> uh, so yeah, dressing it up. Um, oh, you can even say dress it up. The flavor. Can you dress it up a little bit? The flavor's a little dull. So yeah, you could use that for clothing or looks on um, food, equipment, all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Go ahead, Saw. Take over. 
Yes, great examples. So good examples to understand better. This number nine is to dress up. Thanks, Daddy. Yeah. Yes, I love this phrase of verb to dress up. Is when you wear more professional or formal clothing, usually for a specific occasion. So if you're going out for a nice dinner, maybe it's someone's birthday or an anniversary, you would dress up. You would wear more formal or professional clothing than you normally would. Or let's say you have something really, some uh, really important guests coming to your office, some uh, VIP guests. Well, you might dress up. If you normally wear just a t-shirt, you might put on a shirt, maybe dress up, dress up a shirt, maybe a sweet a switch with a tie. Or if you are going to a wedding, of course, that's a great opportunity to dress up, to wear more formal clothes. Now, we often use this in questions form. If you invited uh, to a dinner or a party, you might ask, example, do I need to dress up? Do I need to wear more formal clothing? And they could reply back, example, there's no need to dress up. Right, and the next daddy. Yes, that was good to dress up. Um, there was one I was I forgot to mention. I remember back in the day when I was little, uh -huh. all the girls used to play dress up. They'd always get all their clothes and their mom's clothes, and they get in there and they play dress up, or they play dress up with their Barbies. Remember that? I'm sure you guys played that stuff when you were little. Mostly girls did that. So, anyway, yeah. yeah I'm just that. <laughs> so the next one to get at something or someone to get back at someone. Uh, when someone gets at something, they try to explain what they mean to get at. Oh, okay. So yeah, I was explaining a little different, to get at. So what I'm trying to get at is that, <laughs> I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> no. So like I would be explaining how to do something, but you're just not getting it. So I have to say it another way. So I would say, well, so what I'm trying to get at is that you need to do it this way. Um, yeah, um, I'm, I can't think of uh, another way of saying this one. So go ahead, Saw, see what you got. Yes, okay. Good. Good examples for the number 10. To get it. To get it. To get at something. When someone is getting at something, you're trying, uh, they're trying to explain or express something specific. We commonly use this in question form. Let's say, your coworker is talking to you and they are talking about a meeting that you have, but you're not really sure what they are trying to express to you, what they're trying to explain. You could say, uh, I'm not sure what you're getting it. I'm not sure 
what you're what do you mean i'm not sure what you're trying to explain i'm not sure what you're getting at now you we also use this when you are trying to explain something and the explanation isn't going too well and then you can say what I'm trying to get at is we need to cut back. <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm trying to get at is, and then you state what, you, what you're trying to explain. Good job. So are you ready for your quiz? in the sequence of phrasal verb classes. Here are the questions. Hit pause, take as much time as you need. And when you're ready, you can hit play and see the answers. Here are the answers, hit pause, and you can compare your answers to see how well you did. Awesome job with that quiz. Share your score and let's keep going. In the next class, yes, Daddy? Yes. And thank you guys. And you guys did a wonderful job. And I had fun myself. But don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And definitely like. So we can keep going. And don't forget to uh, send any questions or answers that you guys have and that we need to work on. And it would be great to work on them. So thanks again for coming. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. And thanks, Saw, for having me again. Oh, I appreciate your company in our videos. And it's so amazing, your examples. And you be with us. It's amazing because... You, uh, as a native, can explain and uh, better, and uh, you use a lot of words that uh, you uh, you learned in all your life. So that's amazing to listen to you, and I really, uh, I'm really thankful for that time uh, uh, to have you one more day with us, and. Uh, I'm sure that all followers are really uh, thankful also because they are learning a lot. And uh, as you told, uh, we count on you guys to be with us and to subscribe and comment. And I really appreciate all followers uh, and the comments of you guys. And uh, see you in the next class. Bye-bye for now, and uh, have a good time there, and uh, good studies. Kisses. See you.